do you improve your groove? That is a question that keeps popping up all the time. When you work it on a door, it's easy. You pretty much like grab the samples, chuck them in there, and it's pretty much sorted. But how do you improve your groove on a dollar setup? Well, there's a few tricks obviously on how to do it, but one strong, strong asset to use is call and response. Now I've been over it, over the call and response stuff, but improving your groove on a dollar setup, really, uh, I think the power lies in the call and response base. Right, if you can put call and response on a bass line, your groove will propel and it will be cool. You'll get into that hamster wheel kind of vibe, which is what you want. The infinite loop, hypnotism, speaker hugging material. How to accomplish that, that is going to be today's video. Now, if you are ready for it, let's go and do it right now. Hey, what's up? I'm in Low Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, do not, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Not only that, hang around till the end of this video because I will tell you all about our ever-growing community, which you can find on patreon.com slash analog kitchen and the magic happens on discord as the kind folks over at patreon has so kindly provided a bridge into discord where you can video chat where you can share your music where you can do whatever you want it's a really cool ever-growing community we'll be welcoming you with open arms so do check it out call and response what is it again let's refresh your memory so call and response think of it like this when you ask a question do you expect an answer? It's kind of like mimicking the ebbs and flows of conversation and storytelling. You've got a groove. One, two, three, four, and two, two, three, four, and three, 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 four, and bup, bup, bup. you know how it goes. When you do a four to the floor or whatever, whenever you do some kind of a dance thing, call and response is the interaction between things or notes that you strategically place in the first portion of the groove, the one and two, and the three and four. So it becomes some of, something of a dominant thing. Now you don't have to do it in a one bar segment, that's call and response that happens within four bar segments, within eight bar segments. Um, gospel choirs really get into that vibe, you know the classic gospel where people go like Da, da, da. That answering by the choir is often introduced by somebody singing on the one. Da, 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 Disclosure. I am not a singer, but you get the drift. Now, can you get that vibe? Because I spoke about gospel instantly, you knew exactly what I was talking about, right? What if you can get that kind of vibe on your music? You, as a person, as the listener, as the end user, as somebody on a dance floor, get that sense of completion, fulfillment, that satisfaction feeling of the, the beat being perfect because it revolves. You got the question, you got the answer. Now most production mistakes that I see of tracks not working is where people mistake two things. One thing that they do is they don't take into consideration that when you're making dance music, you're actually invoking a suggestion on the people on the dance floor. Now it's cool to show off how great you are as a producer, but you will not be building an audience, you know? It's like reading a book or watching a movie. The best movies are the ones where you get to envision what the leading character is doing. And when that appeals to your sense of self, and when you can really envision or imagine what's happening, that's when you get engaged into what's happening. Now, it doesn't really work anything different with creating grooves. If you want people to dance, make it so that it's sustainable for them to understand what's going on. And most mistakes, huh? second one point that I want to point out, people overproduce. So in a sense, they would like to show that what they can, but they now overcrowd their production with so much information. And that's cool. It's okay if that is your prerogative. If that's where you want to be, no problem. I'm not hating on that. But if you want to get a, an effective track that you put on and from the first beat everybody goes like what is this 
what's happening, let's all migrate to the dance floor and stay there, then I would suggest the call and response baseline. Hang on tight, fasten your seatbelt. I will tell you how that works. You ready? Let's go. So I've got an arpeggio coming from the Roland J6 and that plays this. Let's start from the beginning, it's this. Nice, it's got a bit of an atmosphere. Do, 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 boom, boom, do, 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 right? Non stop singing, can you sound easy? I am not a singer. Okay, now let's add some uh, drums to it. So I got here, slowly, surely. Yeah. Easing into it, right? So pretty much the bass line is going to play. That's the notes, yeah? Ooh. So pretty simple. So you, we, I opted to go for a little bit up and down. A lot of uh, rev on there. I don't know where it's coming from. You stop it. Okay, now this is all nice and cool. Let's add a kick to it so you know exactly what's happening because I'm going to turn off the arpeggio in a second and then you'll uh, get the gist of where we are. I'm not going to play this here. I'm going to play it here, so that I can record it here, right? Now there is a bass line already playing that plays the full idea. There's a sample of a bass note that I have on track 7 here um, that is engaged, but the fader is down so you don't hear it, which probably plays this. Same as here, right? Okay, but this is cool and it accompanies the ARP that I'm going to turn down right now, right? But what I would want is for this to become a little bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to track 7 here. I'm going to go into this nice uh, segment of where the notes are. So the first half of the measure is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then the second half of the measure is the 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, right? So, bam, bam, doo -doo. Da, da, da. So it's already questioning and answering, but because the frequency um, response is pretty much the same, you won't hear it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the notes starting at 9 or at 8 because it starts as uh, before the beat. Wow. You hear it? And now, I've got my question part already sorted. Let's take out these drums. Okay, hold on. Boom. And now I can answer it with this synth right here, on which I'm going to stick a little bit of delay. A little bit of reverb. A little bit. So, so do you hear how the emphasis on the attack of this first bass line starts to become very powerful where it wasn't? So the contrast between the notes is what's making call and response interesting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out of record mode because I've already edited my audio portion of it. Track 9 is engaged, which is a MIDI channel. I will place the octa track in MIDI mode and now I've got my chromatic
Okay, 11 and 40. I need to know which notes I'm playing. I'm going to record now. <laughs> nice. So the first note obviously is. Okay, I will just uh, do this manually. So there you go. So you can hear that now we've got our call and response bass line going. Can we get it to sit a little bit more in the beat? Because I clearly hear that there are two different notes here and I would like to get them a little bit close. Now for one, the bass line coming from the, um, from the octa track right here, if I turn this off, you can hear that it's very dry. There's no, no real reverb on there. So a little bit, you can hear it room, dark reverb, longer. What I will do, because it's got a nice character, I'm still gonna take everything off, all the reverb, listen to this. It can have a little bit, so I'll place it on 10, the mix. You can clearly hear, really listen carefully, you'll hear that there is a little bit of space. I will exaggerate it first. But the more reverb I'll place on there, the more it's going to um, occupy its own space, which is cool if I was only playing this bass line, but I'm not. So I'm going to make the time fairly short. Time is on 10, mix on 10 as well. So you can hear that there's a little bit of um, emphasis on there. I'm gonna turn this one on now. And I'm gonna do pretty much do the same. I'm also going to play around with the envelope of the sound here. I don't want the sound to be that um, aggressively there. It's going to be shorter. But I will open the attack a little bit. Nice. I'm going to turn down the level of the delay as well. Nice, okay. Let's see if we can add more drums in. Two, three, go. I'm liking that. Bam, bam, two, two, two. And this is a classic house pattern that Masters at work used back in the days. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of um, 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 house cats that used this specific way of working. Okay, now let's see what happens if we add our arpeggio back into the mix. Take out the kick. And instantly, because the arpeggio adds more musicality, I can now hear that the contrasts of the note lengths, it's not adding enough. So I will do the answer portion of my sequence. I will make the notes a little bit longer. But rule of thumb, the notes need to be finished before the other note starts, right? This is too long. Now it keeps hanging. Which you can do in a drop, but not ideal. You know, it makes the track lazier, so. And, but you can add, uh, debate that if this was your groove, Right? Place a little bit of LFO on there if you want to. If we can place some LFO on there. Nice. Then it becomes interesting, right? But we just want to go for a bass line, so it's not a solo instrument. So it means that it's going to stay in its lane. It's 
quarter. Kick in. Yeah, bouncy. Level wise, let's go to this one. Well, amp page. Oh. Let's make sure that we don't have LFOs screwing around here. Okay, kick out. Drum roll. There we go. You can hear that it, that it moves, right? Boom. So, then you stay in that hamster wheel. Boom, 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 ta, 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 boom, boom. Now some people dance to the first uh, half of the beat, others dance to the last half of the beat. Now, what you can also do is see if we can get a different kind of vibe going at all. So that means that I'm going to turn this down. I'm going to look at the bass line again here. Let's say, let's go in and clear all the notes out. Let's first try something else. Before I do that, I'll go to chromatic mode. That's what I wanted. Yes, well. So all the tracks are off, right? So what I can do now is play around with this one here. I'm gonna turn the MIDI also off, which means that I'm going to go in and say, well, I'm doing the mode, it's off, right? So now, if I turn this on. Now I've got two bass lines that I can play, right? Now what I would love to do, and what you saw a lot of synthesizer cats in the 80s do, was they had these two synths and they played them, right? Now I told you that the one, two, three and four can be like, like what I played. But you can also make your call response a different measure, right? Then the answer becomes some sort of an accent. Let's exaggerate that with... A little bit delay. Reverb. I put shimmer on there. Right, okay, so. Now we've got a little bit of spacious stuff going on right here. And then we'll see what we can do if we were to play something like And then you can just go in and go even a little bit crazier if you want to. Let's see what we can do here. This one is a little bit on the soft side, so what I'm going to do is make it louder. Okay, let's not make it too loud and try something. You'll see, it's all to do with contrast and I love it because then if you were to play, uh, for instance, that arpeggio that we have that now plays a um, sequence, obviously, uh, like this. I'm not going to follow that step towards the end. I'm just going to stay on the ostinato part here. Then you can play the melody with the answer part. So it's one, two, three. Okay, let's 
turn this off because this is funky. Okay. Okay, let's record that in. Bam, 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 bam. As we start something like this. Now, and a great thing to also do is, if you're not the best um, keyboard player in the world, have your call already programmed. Like, the only thing it plays is this. Nice, also the beats need to work, right? But now you can do all these things. So you can make a whole chord scheme out of it, right? Or you can just stay on the same root note. Nice. So this is what I use. Uh, and I call it suggestive notes, which means you don't really hear what I'm playing. But it still will give a texture to in the background. Or you can have something more obvious. This is offbeat. On the beat. Before the beat. So now it's before the groove, which means that if you have a long delay or a uh, reverb, it now, the effect becomes the, 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 the response bar. Listen. So there's so many things that you can do. Let's go to our MIDI page, turn this on and just say, we're going to put it in record and clear the MIDI notes. And MIDI 9. There, the notes are gone, right? Cool. Now we're gonna go to chromatic mode so I can play something here. I just want to turn it on while it's playing. There you go. Right? Okay. Six. There you go. Nice. Nice and short, snappy notes. Let's look a little bit at how we get to shape the envelope here. But also keep in mind if you're doing something like this and you're not putting a shuffle on the stuff that you play that your groove has got a shuffle, your call and response probably won't work that well because it's going to uh, feel awkward, right? So what I'm going to do here is I am going to go in and say, can I put a swing on there? And I can, so I'm going to... Um, Second, there you go. So, pretty much, if everything is on the groove, I'm shifting the notes uh, forward a bit. Now, you can hear it's very almost off beat. <laughs> a swing of 67. A swing of 57 is max for me, though. I'll probably not go over 56. So, cool, got my swing set. Okay, now let's um, 
take that horrible long reverb off there. Go for a room, shimmer out, delay off. Nice, cool. Okay, different kind of vibe. I'm going to look at this sound by turning everything down here and just like shape the sound a little bit. Cool. Nice. Turn the hard sync off. Let's see if we can pitch it a little bit. Right. Cool. So now the second oscillator is pitched to a different note. I can pitch to a perfect fi a fifth, but I'm going to go for this. And then have that other note play this. There's a lot of drive on there. A little resonance. Okay, there you go. Play the sub oscillator. Yes. Cool. Take out the noise. And shape the second oscillator a little bit. There you go. Ooh. No. Nice. Cool. Open up the bass line here. Let's front of fire a little bit, if that's so even a word. There you go. Ah, power, power. And now this, this thing becomes a little bit more of an emphasis on your groove, right? Because you would not want to um, tamper with this as well. So I've got this sitting right here, this bass light, but Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, the call part and the response part, I'm going to just like play around with the release. Take out low. Nice. Little bit of a drum roll. We love dramatics. Rest of the drums in. One, two, three. And don't forget to put in low on your bass line, obviously. Yeah, you gotta like it. Now, how does this work with uh, this ARP? Probably won't work. What doesn't work is the fact that this obviously is obviously tuned to a major chord. So I will tune it to a minor chord, which is what I'm going to do like so. Which is that second oscillator. So this I need to pitch here. Now it's better. So, major, minor, right, okay, put the rest on, and the arp, nice, cool, drum roll, and the rest of the beats in, two, three, four. And then you got two parts. You can do a solo part with your um, arpeggio to make a big uh, impact. Like so. Nice one. Go for it down. Cool. Kick drum. Slowly take out the arp and just go completely on this uh, hypnotic thing. Yep, house music. Like so. 
And that's how I build up my stop. So I do think it's a powerful thing to have this call and response business going. Um, try it out, see for yourself, and uh, let me know in the comment section what you think, right? That is how I do it. That's been working for me for a long time. I actually picked it up when I was playing in a band. And most often when you've got like two guitarists playing and they're dueling, you know, one is playing something and the other one's playing, it, they have to make room for each other. And that help, helps if they uh, do it in column response. So that's the way I work. And I thank you for uh, checking that out. Um, if you want to join up with our dance carousel, which is something that we do with our community, which you can find on patreon.com slash kitchen. See what I did there? <laughs> nice bridge, huh? Okay, so we actually work together. A lot of producers, we, most of us, we only met each other you know, in our community, so we never met each other in person, but we still had an incentive to make music together. And I thought to come up with a concept called The Dance Carousel, Hallelujah. which is you create your own dollars, uh, bars, you create beats, then you play some music over it, but you give your beats to the next producer, which has to start with the beats that you have provided. So the first part of the next producer is going to be your beats, and they play their music over it. Trans, uh, um, uh, they transfer into their own uh, beats with their music still on it, but transfer their beats again to the next one. So it's really cool. Check it out, Dance Carousel. And look at your Dance Carousel. You want to join that? Join Patreon, then get into Discord, and we will be there waiting with open arms. Or not, but it's a cool thing, and do, do check it out. Um, I did not place one on this video, as we're still getting more producers in. But, you know, don't be a stranger. Go and check that out. Now, I think that concludes our broadcast day. I am Analog Kitchen. Thank you for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. And if not anything else, I will probably catch you next week on another video. Keep watching this space. I love you. Give me some love, share, like, uh, comment, helps the channel, and I'll catch you on the rebound. I'm out. Peace.